Well, hello. I'm ready to do some more pencil puzzles today. Um, we're looking at some gaps again. Uh, I've gotten a little behind on the gaps, so I'm going to try and do several and get caught up. Hope, or Well, not caught up, but closer to caught up anyways, hopefully. I did do some during the second half of the stream I did about a week ago. So if you're interested in seeing the gaps and you didn't see the stream, go look at the second half of the stream. I'll link it down below up in the corner up there. Uh, the first half was great too. I did a, a fun puzzle there, but if you're just interested in the gaps, it'd be the second half of that stream. And uh, yeah, uh, I just also want to mention that um, some of you may have seen a video show up uh, yesterday on the feed and now it's gone. Um, apparently I had an incorrect solution. There was a cage that was supposed to sum to 13 and I had a four and a seven in there. Apparently four plus seven is not 13. Um, now I know that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it had an incorrect solution. I didn't realize it. Um, it was bound to happen eventually. Uh, so I pulled down the video because I didn't want anybody to look to the video for help if they got stuck with the puzzle and then, you know, get misled by the mistakes that I made. Um, so I'll leave a link down below to that puzzle, though. So it was a Sudoku with friendly cells. It was a lot of fun. It was really neat, but I just made a logical error somewhere and went wrong. Uh, so you should definitely go try that puzzle though, um, even though the video is gone. So, but today we are doing gap puzzles and the first one up is a detour. This is by Jovial. Uh, and detour is another one that I've never done. So that's one of the great things about the gaps is you get introduced to all these puzzle types you've never seen before. So um, let's see, draw a non-intersecting loop through the centers of all cells. In each clued region, the loop must make the indicated number of turns. So it's, it's basically like a simple loop, but um, in the regions, you have to do the correct number of turns. So there's an example right over here. You can kind of see like the long one region in the first row there has one turn um, on the right side there. It goes over and turns down and there's no other turns within it. And then the four in the second row there, you can see it has, you know, Four turns so pretty simple rules anyways we'll see if the puzzle is simple it should be approachable hence gap genuinely approachable pencil puzzle so link in the description i'm going to give it a try let's reset the timer see how this goes so i mean since it's you have to fill all the cells with a loop so at, at its base level this is just a simple loop um we have to do all the corners we know we have to do that now <clears throat> The zeros, I think, is, so since you can't turn, in some ways we can kind of think of these like in an ice loam or an ice barn as, as a blue cell. This is like a blue region. You can't, once you enter it, you have to go straight through. You can't turn. So we're going to have to go across there and across there. And now that means that the other part has to go this way. And we do have two turns in the two now, so that's good. Um... And so then what are we going to do here? Oh, the four. So the four, that means that in all four of the cells, you must turn. Once you enter a cell, you must turn. So this has to turn here, which means this is then going to have to go like that. Because this essentially becomes like another corner up there. Since you can't go to the left or up out of those cells. Um, and this also has to turn because we know this is a four. Now, because this is going to have to have a turn it's gonna have to come down it could go left or right i suppose but it's gonna have to stick down that way um and this one likewise is gonna they're both gonna have to do this since they can't go up so if you're doing a turn that means you have to have a vertical and a horizontal line i mean there's no way to turn and not have a vertical and a horizontal and since you can't go up from those cells they got to come down essentially um, this, we can't create a small loop here, so this has got to do that. That pushes that down even farther. Uh, this four here, let's see. Um, right, so you've got, again, you've got to have a vertical and a horizontal. The only way to have a horizontal line coming out of these two cells is to go to the left. Uh, same here on these fours. They've all got to go like that. So... What do we do? Oh, so now that we've connected up here, we can't connect down here. Right. So this has to go this way. And... That could go there. 
Just trying to figure out. Oh, this is now a corner right here, right? So it has to do that. So the fours essentially become. Um, I mean, you have to do that or the other way around, right? Uh, sort of a, a top hat or an upside down top. I don't know what you call it. But where, let's see, I'm trying to figure out what I need to do next here. This has three turns in it. We've only done one. So one of these two has to turn. So you could do that. Or you could do that. But I think either one of those is fine. So what am I supposed to see here? Missing something. I'm obviously missing something I should be seeing. Because this could go that way. And it would do all of that. Or it could go this way. And it would do that. That seems like it's fine either way. I can only have one turn in here. Maybe that's what I need to look at. So that means only one of these three cells can have a turn. So you've got to go straight through somewhere. Like if we did that. Oh, we can't do that. Right, right, right. Okay. Right. So the we know this has to these two have to turn. This has to either go left or right, and so does this one. So these can't go we can we can mark all those with x's like that because they have to turn. These all have to turn. One way or another. And so now the one since you can only turn in one of the four cells, there's got to be a set of two next to each other, either beside or above and below, where the line just goes straight through. And so it can't be a vertical straight through now. I think this has to come down this way either way. Because either this is going to... Oh, that's not true. That's not true. That's completely wrong. Ignore that. Um, so we've got to go straight through this way or straight through this way. What about in here? What can we do in here? These are, this is, this is, oh, this is, look, we've got, this is like a, um, like a double corner here. So it has to do this. That's the only way to get into there, those cells and back out. Okay, and so now, if if this turns, you're going to have two turns. So this can't turn, it's got to go straight. And therefore, this has to be the one with the turn. And that's going to force the rest of this. Like that, there we go. Ah, Took me a lot longer to see that middle part than I should have. Okay, well, 619, 619, um, I'm sure that's going to be, uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a bird. That's all right. Interesting. That was interesting. That one, I was focused on the one, uh, yeah, I looked at the one and I should have looked over here. Putting in those X's is what helped me see that actually. So it helps to mark your X's. Um, words to live by. Mark your X's. All right, on to the next one. All right, next up is a double Chaco. This one is by Turganis. And I've done a double Chaco. I believe Turganis put one in my Secret Santa puzzle hunt, if I remember correctly. It was a little bigger than this. Um, so I, I have a little bit of experience with double Chaco. Um, 
All right, divide the grid into regions of orthogonally connected cells, each containing a connected group of white cells and a connected group of gray cells with the property that the shape of the white cells is identical to the shape of the gray cells. So this is gonna be a lot easier to understand if we just look at the example. So you looked over here, right in the, where the two is, there's two gray cells at the top, two white cells at the bottom, and the gray cells are a one by two and the white cells are a one by two. And the four on the side here, you can see there's four grays in kind of an L shape and four whites in an L shape. They're different orientation, but they're still the same shape. Um, and the clued cells, so the numbers, must belong to a region containing the indicated number of white cells and the indicated number of gray cells. So again, the fours, we have four grays and four whites. The two, there's two whites. Over on the left side there, there's three whites and three grays in the three. There you go. So you can have more than one clue in the same region. Um, and that's that's it. That's, that's all the rules. Um, so I'm going to give it a try. Link in the description. Uh, let's reset the timer. Okay, so... Ah, well, this, this gray one up here has to be part of... I mean, it, it's by itself, so it has to be a one, which means it has to have a white one connected to it. And the only white one that can connect to it is right there. That's what I'm trying to say. This has to be, I think it has to do, ooh, no, 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 no. So this, the three whites have to be together, but they could go with the three, actually, no, they can't. The Because the, the two here means these, this has to be two grays. Uh, and it probably goes with the two whites like that. But not necessarily, so let's hold off on that. Which then means, I think our three whites and our three grays have to do that. And now these, this three could turn and come down here. No, it can't, because this two has to connect to, yeah, it could. It could, it could do that. You know, you could do something like that and then connect to the three grays up here. As long as this connected down there. Interesting, and now I've got all these grays down here, too. Ah, ah, okay, so what I think is gonna happen is we're gonna do the fives. Oh, we've got another single one down here. Um, is it all symmetrical? No, not quite. But I think it's gonna be similar. We got the three here. Yep, this three has to be, the only way you can have three grays is like that, but then it's gotta connect to some whites somewhere. But that tells us that this has to be the three and the three. Five and five, this is one and one. So now these have to be two and two because there's that's the only place these two whites can connect to. And that's, I think, gonna give us a three and a three like that and the ones and the fours across there and the twos there maybe, maybe? We'll see. Um, So that's going to be three, three and three, three and three, three and three, like that. Oh, it didn't give me the pop-up. Oh, there we go. I had an extra line in there. <laughs> okay, there we go. So that was the double Chaco, 228. That's, that's a little better than the last one. I still probably not a sloth, but nope, I'll take a crab. That's okay. I was well into the crab territory on that one. So crab time was 6.15, so. Uh, all right, that was fun, on to the next one. All right, next up is a Dominion by Freddie Hand, another one I've never seen before. So let's see what the rules say. Shade some dominoes of cells to divide the grid into unshaded areas. Shade, shaded dominoes may not touch orthogonally. So dominoes means just two cells connected. Um, they may not touch orthogonally, okay? Clues cannot be shaded, and each orthogonally connected area of unshaded cells contains exactly one type of clue and all instances of it. Okay, so basically all of the letters that are the same have to be in the same unshaded area. So, oh, I got it, okay, I understand. I was confused for a second, um, I don't know why, but essentially, if you think about it, the dominoes have to be not orthogonally connected, but we have to be separating the unshaded areas. They can't be orthogonally connected either. So 
all of your dominoes are going to have to be touching in corners. Which is what it looks like in the example there too. You'll notice all the dominoes touch diagonally. Okay, cool. So let's get rid of the example. Reset the timer. Link in the description. All that jazz. And reset. Start. There we go. We'll see how this goes. So do all of the... I guess one thing I didn't look at is do all of the, yeah, all of the letters. Is that what it said? Oh, all instances of it. Yeah, that was the last thing on the rules. All instances of. So all of the R's have to be part of the same area. Got it. And this O cannot be the same as the R. So I think that forces this just to make those separate. And now... Okay, and then we can't put another shaded cell orthogonally connected. So we can do that. Um, this R and this E, oh, eh, it could go either way there. But the R and the E have to be separated. Um, same with the C and the L here. Now the E has to connect to the other E up there somehow. And this E. Oh, the R. Yep, same deal up here. The R and the E up here have to be separated. Now these R's have to be connected. So I think this could go either. Now if this goes here, you would have to do that to keep these R's and E's separate. And then the E wouldn't be able to connect to the other E's. So this has to come down that way. There we go. Now, right, and we have to connect, all the dominoes have to be connected diagonally somehow, right? So, you could put one there, but then your E is going to connect to the C. So there's got to be one over here to separate this R from this E somehow. The C and the E need to be separated here. And so I th think, yeah, I think it's going to have to be like this. And then this will have to be in because this has to connect to the other E's somehow. Now the L, so there's got to be one here going one direction or the other. If it goes this way, now you can't get the E out without it connecting to the V. So it's got to go there, like that. Uh... Ah, they don't, mm, they don't, the dominoes don't all have to be connected to each other, actually, because what we're going to have is the E coming all the way through here. So we can't actually cut it off. So I think we're going to have to, do that. Not necessarily, because we could do this and still get... It's interesting. The R's have to connect. We know that. So this R has to connect through here somehow. And it can't connect to the E. So it's got to connect, you know, through this one, which is then going to force these to be... Uh, is that going to go, if this goes this way, now you're, you're, well, you could do that. No, because it's still going to connect to the V down here. So you're going to have to come down this direction. We can do all of that. This is part of the R. This is part of the V. We can't connect those two. So that's got to be a shaded cell there. And at this point... What I'm wondering is, okay, we've got to separate the O from the R, so it's got to do that. Oh, we got a problem. We connected the V to the E, didn't we? Back up, back up. Okay. Did something wrong. 
Okay, we have to have one here. If it comes down here, this is R and V, so it's gotta do that, but that connects the V to the E, okay. So it's actually gotta go this way, I think. Which means we have to separate this V from this E and this V from this R. And the R has to get through over here to connect to the R. There we go. That's what I did wrong. Okay. And that makes more sense because I was confused how it was going to be unique otherwise. There we go. Okay, perfect. Because I had that big section over here with the R and I was thinking how, what, what prevents you from sticking another domino over here? But it's because I was doing it wrong in the middle. Okay, so 518 on that one. I don't know, I think that's, I'm happy with that. New genre, never done before. Hey, it's a crab, I'll take it. First time ever doing a new genre, if I can get a crab, I'm happy with that. Sloths are amazing, but crabs are good. All right, so that's that was Dominion by Freddie Hand, on to the next one. All right, next up is a Fuzuli, Fuzuli by Eric Fox. It sounds like a type of pasta. I think that's Fusili. Fusili? Yeah, something like that. Anyways, Fuzuli by Eric Fox. Um, another new one for me. Place letters from the range given outside the grid into some empty cells so that each row and column contains each letter once. So sort of like a Latin square of letters, except we're not filling every cell. There's gonna be empty cells. All right, no two by two group of cells may be entirely filled with letters. Oh, I love the two by two rule. So, hey, this is great for me. Uh <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's look at the example quick. So this the example is using A through C. The actual puzzle is using A through D. But so basically we're just putting each letter into each row and column once and you can't have a two by two completely filled. That's it. Okay. Seems pretty simple rules anyways. So let's see how this goes. All right, so link in the description. Going to reset the timer. Give it a shot. Okay, so we know we have to have an A in the first row. It can't be there, it can't be there. So one of these two is an A. We also have to have a D, which can't be here or here. So, uh, let's see, can we do... No, nope, let's do it this way. There we go. Uh, all right, so A's, D's. Uh, it needs to have a B in the second row and it's gotta be in one of these. I don't know if this is the best way to do this or not, but this is the way I'm doing it. Um, so we can't put a D and a B here because we'd have, and the D has to go in one of these two. So we can't put D and B, we'd have the two by two. So if the D is here, B forces the D there, and the D there. D forces the B, so we have to have one of these two, and one of these two, basically. Is that true? No, I think we can do both of these, actually. No, we can't, because, right, you can't do both of these because that would force the A over here, but then you'd have a two by two there. So you can't do both of these. You have to have one of these and one of these. Okay, C's. Uh... Oh, this is the only place you can put a C in column three. Okay. Well, I guess we should have looked at that first. C there, which means you can't put anything here. Uh, I'm going to put an X. I don't know if that's going to mess up the solution check, but eh, I'm not going to. That just makes it harder to see because it's filled in. Uh, maybe maybe I will shade it. Oop. Oh, I'm on. There you go. Ah, it was not letting me use the key. Shortcut keys. Okay. Shortcut keys I normally use aren't working. That's okay. These cannot be shaded because of the 2x2 two two rule. That's what I want to say. Okay. Um. So... Therefore, the A and the B have to be at the top and the bottom. This has to be the A. Because it can't be the B. So this is the A, this is the B. And now this cannot be the D because we'd have a two by two issue. This is the D. 
that can't be the D, this is the D, this can't be a B, this is a B. Um, we've now got all of our letters across there, so that's not a letter. Uh, a, B, C, D, we need an A and a D in here. The Ds there make this a D. D, 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 D. So we've got all the Ds. We need some more A's. We need an A in one of those. Uh, the A has to be down here, which then means that row is done. Uh, and also, we have to avoid the two by two issue there. So that's out. So this has to be the A, which puts an A there. And this is out then, because the two by two. So we need a B in this row, can't be over here. This is the B, finishes that row. Uh, this has to be a C to finish the column, finishes that. And now we need a B here and a C there. Hooray, all right, cool. So yeah, once I, once, <laughs> once I looked in the right place and saw the C in column three, then I really started going. Um, 355 on that one. Let's see what that is. 355. Oh, I just missed a sloth. Sloth time was 330, so that was close on that one. If I uh, if I looked in the right place to start, I think I might have I might have gotten that one. That's all right. On to the next puzzle. All right, so our next puzzle type is parquet. No, it's probably parquet. <laughs> I'm quite certain it's pronounced parquet. Uh, this one is by Shy. Uh, let's see, I've got the example here. There we go. Don't want to forget to put that on the screen. So, new one to me again. Uh, in each bold region, entirely shade one subregion and leave the other unshaded such that all shaded cells form one orthogonally connected area with no loops or orthogonally connected shaded, no loops of orthogonally connected shaded cells, nor any two by two areas. So, my favorite two by two rule. I love that. You know, I, I never forget the two by two rule. Um, <laughs> Actually, I'm probably not going to forget it now that I've done quite a few of these. It's, it's going to be hammered into my brain. Um, so we need to have, look at the example. We've got to connect all the shaded cells to each other. The unshaded areas, so does that mean... Is that kind of like cave where, but the opposite, where the unshaded has to touch the edge? Because you can't create a loop of shaded cells. No, no, you could have a trapped unshaded cell if the loop went all the way around but not at the corner. Okay, so that's not quite the same as cave. All right, but we can't make a loop. So like in the example here, I guess right there, if that cell was shaded, right right there, <laughs> um, it would create a loop of shaded cells. Okay, I think I understand the rules. I guess we'll see how this goes. So, um, link in the description. Reset, start. Um, oh, I, I, I didn't look at the example closely enough. I didn't realize, I don't know. I guess I didn't realize the regions were already divided into two. I was thinking we'd have to figure out how to divide them. Okay, that actually makes more sense. Um, well, this can't be shaded because it would be isolated. Right? So we can start with this. That means this, the two by two rule. I'm not gonna forget that. Uh, that means this can't be shaded though, because of the two by two. So we're gonna get this. Uh, these all have to be unshaded. That has to be shaded. Um, this can now cannot be shaded, obviously. Well, it couldn't be anyways, because it's two by two thing, no matter what. So that, this forces this to come out, because it needs to connect to the rest of the shaded cells somehow this one this one okay so this has to be unshaded you'd have a two by two issue otherwise so the only way for this piece to connect to anything has to be to connect to other shaded has to go that way and then those also have to connect to here so we get all of that um This can't be shaded, because it would be isolated. So this is unshaded, that's shaded. 
Now this would create a two by two. So we go there, this would create a two by two. This is not a this two by two issue there too. There's a lot of two by two avoidance in this puzzle type, it seems. We can't create a loop, so this can't be shaded. Oop, ah, so we have to do that. Um, we also can't create a loop here, so we've got to do that. Now, this would create a loop right here. So we do that, and now, this, what's the issue with, oh, this, again, this would create a loop. So this has to be unshaded and shaded, there we go. Correct, all right, 213, that felt pretty, pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was another crab. Take that. Like I said, crab on a, on a puzzle I've never done before is always a good thing. All right, so that was Parquet by Shy. So on to the next one. All right, next up, this one is Minesweeper, which might seem a little familiar to those of you that used to play the old Minesweeper game on Windows computers. I'm not sure if they had it on Apple or not. I always had a Windows computer. Um, but this is sort of similar to that, same idea. So, and I've done, I believe I did a Minesweeper, yeah, a, a friendly Minesweeper Sudoku uh, on the channel. So I've, we've done a little bit of Minesweeper stuff before, even if not a, a strictly Minesweeper puzzle, I believe. Maybe I've done a Minesweeper puzzle by itself too. I, I feel like I have, but I can't remember when. Anyways, Minesweeper, I've done a little bit before, not too many, just a couple. So the rules are place mines into some empty cells so that each clue has the indicated number of mines in the up to eight surrounding cells. So this part is actually kind of like uh, Tapa-ish, but um, instead of the connected, it's um, just all of the surrounding cells total. Clued cells cannot be mines, and a question clue indicates an unknown amount of mines. And we don't have any question clues in the puzzle, it doesn't look like, so... Um, we don't have to worry about that, but there are some in the example. So, um, just take the, the three there in the first row. It sees uh, a mine to its left, a mine below it, and a mine kind of to its right and down diagonally. So those are the three that are connected to that three. So, that's it. That's, that's all it is. You're just marking mines. So, um, get rid of the example there. Gonna give it a try. We'll see how it goes. Let's reset the timer. Um, okay, so the zero, we can't put a mine anywhere. Oh yeah, and it's anywhere around there. That's right, not just orthogonally connected. So the one tells us there can only be one in these three here. So for this three to have three, those two are gonna have to be in. Um, and that is the one for the one clue there. Um, so you have the option on Puzzlink to have it gray out the numbers when they're completed. I'm actually gonna uncheck that just because, I don't know. I feel like being a little wild. Let's see. <laughs> um, so the five here has seven possibilities. But we know we can only use at most two out of these four. So these three are gonna have to be mines because of the two here these four cells the two above and the two below can have at most two so these three have to be in order for the five to get to five and that's the one for the one got two so they're they now have to have these for the two and that's it for the three. Oh, this three i could have done that from the start it only has three possibilities um now the five has to get these two in order to get five that's Finished for the two, the four is done. Um, where do we look next? This two needs to have two. Oh, and I can't have both of these because they'd both be touching the one. So this one is in for sure. One of these two is in, which is gonna finish off that one. So that eliminates those. The seven. The seven only has seven possibilities. So we have to fill all those in, which finishes the two, finishes this two, that has to be the last one for the three. Uh, the three is done. The four sees two and only has two more possible options. This one has to be in to finish the two and the one there. This five sees 
four of them. The seven, oh, the seven, the same thing. Got to do all seven of those, which is now one, two, three, four, five for the six. You need to have one more here, which is going to be the fifth one for the five. So that's out. Uh, this three is done. This two needs to have a second one. This three is done. This four sees two. It only has two more options. Uh, oh, the one is done. So that puts that one there for the six and the five. This is the three. There we go. All right, fun puzzle, very nice. Um, if I was if I was looking around the grid a little better, I would have seen those sevens and the three in the corner and probably gotten a, a, a faster start on that, but that's okay. 242 puts me solidly into the crab time, just a little ways away from the sloth, not too much. Take that. All right, that was Minesweeper. On to the next one. All right, next up is another puzzle that's new to me. I've never even heard of it before. I, I'm going to say Bonsan, 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 Bonsan. I'm not really sure. Bonsan, Bonsan. That's what we're going with. This one's by Freddie Hand. Um, so move some circles. Okay, so this is another moving things puzzle. I've done a few like that before. The positions of the circles have 180 degree rotational symmetry in the entire grid. Positions of the circles. Oh, okay. So looking, look at the example. So the two at the top there is rotationally symmetric with the empty one at the bottom row there. And then these two in the last column are rotationally symmetric with the ones over in the first column, the two and the three. So basically anywhere there's a circle, if you go 180 degrees around, there has to be another circle. Okay. A circle may move only in one straight line vertically or horizontally. You can't go up and turn and stuff. Circles paths may not cross each other. Other circles or other circles. Okay, usual stuff for moving things. Circles containing clues must be moved exactly the indicated number of cells. Okay, that's... So this is a lot like... What was the other one where we were moving this... We were moving... We were moving squares, I think, and creating rectangles. I don't remember what that was called. But this feels similar to that, except we're moving circles and we're creating rotational symmetry instead of moving squares and creating rectangles. But a lot of the other, the numbers and the not crossing and stuff is very similar. Okay, and, and clearly from the example there in the bottom row, you can see that one didn't move. So if it doesn't have a number, it can move or it doesn't have to move, so. All right, there we go. I'm gonna give it a try. It's a it's a fun looking pattern here. Almost, uh, it almost looks like a, a, a kind of a fish, you know, going that direction to the left. I don't know. Anyways, that's what I see. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna reset the timer. Give this one a try. All right, so... I mean, this has to move... Let's see, we have to have rotational symmetry. So, theoretically, could one get to that position if that didn't move? This one could. And this one, you could go there, and you'd have symmetry with these two. Oh, interesting. So I can click. I'm not sure what, what good that does me, but I can shade things. I guess whatever I want it to mean, right? Um, so this would then have to move three that way. That's in this spot. What one could get to there? This one could. This is probably not the best way to do it. But that's okay. That's how I'm doing it anyways. Ah, okay, so I've already caused a problem. Okay, I need to go back. I gotta think about this logically. Back, 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 there we go, okay. This four is the place to look. I don't know why I didn't look this. Okay, what I always say, look at the most restricted thing first, right? What's most restricted? The four. Where can the four go? It can't go to the right, can't go up, it has to go down. There we go. Okay, that's gonna give us a lot. Now I need to have something right here then for symmetry, right? Maybe that's what the colors are for. So what can go there? The three can't go there, it go too far. The one can't get to there. The only thing that can get there is this. So that has to go there. Now it's now gonna force the three to go left or right. It goes over here, okay, yeah. The two. 
Okay, these twos are either going to go like that or like that. Either way, there's a two here and a two there. Those, those are getting moved over there one way or another. So this one is up there. This one is right there. So what can get to this spot? No, sorry, that's not right there. That's right there. Gotta get in the right spot. So what can get right there? The only thing that can go there is this. This one can, but it would have to cross. So we can do that. And the uh, we've got two options for this one. Okay. Um, so what I'm wondering is this cell, does it need to move? Oh, this can't move to the right anymore. So this has to come up. That's the corner. This is the only thing that can get to the opposite corner. Now this has to go this way, which is right there. Uh, this is the only thing that can go down there, which forces the twos this direction. Very nice. Uh, something needs to go to here. One of these has to. Okay, the one could go there, which would be symmetrical with this one. And then, oh, but the two, where can the two go? No, nope, we got to back up. Back up. Oh, this is okay. There we go. Actually, the two is what we need to look at. It has to come down. That's the only direction it can go which is then right here. So that's gotta be there. This one's gotta go to the yellow. And now this can either go up or down, but it's gotta be symmetrical with this one. So we're gonna have to do that and that. There we go. All right, that took me a lot longer than it should have. That's okay. That was fun. That one's neat. That was really cool. I'd, I'd like to do some more of those actually. Um, all right, so I think I had what? Three, 33, 333, which is another crab. All right, so so far I've got one bird and seven crabs today. I'm, I'm happy with that. All right, got one more, one more that I'm gonna do. On to the next one. All right, ahora tomamos el tren. That means we're gonna take the train. Um, I've been doing Spanish on Duolingo, so I know how to say tomamos el tren because the they like to do transportation words. Anyways, we're doing a train puzzle. Um, Locate some train carriages in the grid, each of which either one are okay, each of which are either one by two or one by three in size, okay, which may not overlap each other, right? Each clue must be used by a carriage, and each carriage must contain exactly one clue. Each clue must be used by a carriage. Okay. The value of which represents how many different locations to which the carriage can be moved by sliding it in either direction of the short end without overlapping another carriage or going out of the grid. Staying stationary does not count as one of these locations. Okay, okay, so let's, we definitely need to look at an example on this one. So, right, so if you think of it as a train car, right, it, it's not gonna move this way, right? If it's long, it's gonna move in the direction of the end of the train car. So that makes sense. So like the four down here, it can't move left and right because that would be nonsense for a train car, right? So it has to move up and down and it could move up one, two, three, or four cells. And so there are four places it could move to. The three in the next column can move up one, two, or three. So the numbers are telling us how many places it can move to. Okay, and then the three in the middle if you look at the three in the, uh, column four, it can actually move up one or down two. So it has three places it could move to. Okay. Interesting. I think I understand the rules. I'm just not sure on the logic yet. <laughs> all right, I guess we'll find out. Um, all right, we'll go for it. What do we got to lose? What's the worst that happens? We get a bird? Have some fun? All right. Sounds good to me. Okay, so, um, link in the description. I'm gonna give it a try. Let's see, let's restart the timer. Um, so, oh, okay, we've got, we've got some lines already drawn in the grid. Okay, I see, but not everywhere. I'm not sure if the lines are important. Okay, I don't know. Anyways, um, so they need to be one by two or one by three. This one can only have one location it can move to. So it, if it was, uh, let's see, is there, a, I gotta figure out how to, 
Uh, it's not going to be a good way to... Okay, we're going to go like this. Um, if It could be here, and then the two would have to go to... It would have to be to the right. Because this would have to have one spot it could move to. Otherwise, the two is going to have to come to the left one to keep the one from going... Okay, I'm not sure. Oh, this four. This four needs to... Uh, but it would really depend on what's above and below it. Not sure how to start this thing, actually. Oh, this four. This four is where we need to start. Okay, right. So it's going to have to have at least one more cell. It could be to the left or to the right. Let's say it's to the right. What does that leave it? So that leaves the one car, one space to move to. The four has one on the right, one, two, three on the left. So it has to be like that. And then we can say these can't be train cars. That's what we need to do. Okay, so then this one has to move up. Uh, one, two, three. So right now... Oh, and this three... Okay, so if this, if this goes to the right, it's not going to have three spaces it can move to. So it's got to face down. And now that that has to be the end of that because if they go any farther, either one of these, they won't have three spaces that those can move to. Okay. Now the five, the five needs to have five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. And it has to be moving vertically. It can't be moving horizontally, right? So we've got to do that. One, two, three, four. Oh, no, that's not true. It has to be a one by two, but it could be either either direction. Because it could be here and it has one space up and four down. But we do know that none of these can be train cars. Now the zero needs to have other trains on both sides of its ends so that it can't move. But I'm not sure what that tells us other than that. This three, what about this three? The two here needs to have two spaces, so we can't, we definitely can't go this way. This, yeah, these both have to be empty because that's the only way this can have two spaces. Okay, which means the three has to go this direction. It's got two to the right, it needs to only have one to the left, it's gotta do that. Um, and then, this four, maybe? So we know it has to have at least one more above or below. It's got to obviously be a vertical. It can't go horizontal. It could go up like that, and it would have one, two, three, four. So it could also do this. So that allows the one to go. To, I was wondering if it could possibly go... Yeah, if you had to have this open, but it doesn't have to be. You can do that and you still have four. So the one could go up or to the left. This two feels like... It's not going to be able to be to the left. It can't be a horizontal car because... It can. It can. It can. Yes, it can. This four is vertical and has, hmm, what about this four? Is this four any help? So it's got to be, really, it's not very helpful. Maybe the three, the three. Whichever direction it goes, it's got three up there, it's got two down here. Right, so, but it can also go this way. What I'm thinking is, this zero has to have a car on either side, on both sides of it. So, if it were to go up this way. What would what car would be here? There's no car that can be right there. 
So it's got to come down at least one here. And again, what car can be here? This one can't reach it. So it's got to come down this way. And then the two has to stick across just to block the zero. And now it's going to have two to the left. So the one's going to have to stick down to block the two from going to the right. And now this one has one cell below it. So it's got to have something blocking it above as well. Does that work? What would be blocking it? Oh, it can, it can be, yeah, because it can go here. And then the three is going to have to stick over this way to block the one. I think that's all true. I think that works. They're sort of all jammed in there like a jigsaw. And now the three has to be able to have three spaces it can move to over there. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the way it goes. Okay, and then this zero needs something above it. It can't be the three. It's got to be the four. So the four has to come over here. I think I need to draw some lines in. Let's see if I can get to the line. Oh no, that's not what I want. Uh, I need uh, I don't know. I don't know. Edge. I don't know. This is this is probably the wrong line. It's probably not going to work for the solution check now. I don't know. That's all right. Um, okay, so I think all of these are true. I know all of these. Um, this one, one, two, three, four, five. So wherever the... Can't this five go either way now? I feel like the five, couldn't the five go here and have five spaces below it or there and have five spaces below? Oh, the f okay, right. The four is gonna determine that. Right, right, right. Because we're gonna need to make sure we have the right number of spaces for the four. Okay, that's fine. This four now. If it comes down, it's gonna have two here. Yeah, not sure. Uh, maybe the other four? Let's go up, one down. Okay, where do we need to look now? Um. If this one, if either one of these ones is vertical, yeah, they could do something like that, couldn't they? And then they would still only have one space. If they're, if they go this way, I mean, you could do that and that would work. Um, this one could stick over here and it would have one, one space. But, but then this four would have to go up so as not to block the one. And now this four is going to already have four empty. So this would have to be another train car. And what car could be there? There can't be one. So this one actually can't go to the left. It's got to go up. And therefore, we have to do that just to keep those ones from getting, uh, having too much freedom of movement. So we can do all of that. Which then means, what does it mean? We still need the four to not have that much space though. So I think the three is gonna have to stick over here just to limit the four. And then the four is gonna have to be like that so it has four spaces. Yeah, I think it's gotta do that. The three now has three, the two is done. Now we just need this one to have one space and the two to have two spaces. Oh no, the two has too many. Oh, the one can be bigger though. The one can be bigger. And then the two can be, yes, like that. And now the four sees three over here. It needs to have an empty one over there. So we have to do that. Now I think hopefully if I draw in the lines, 
maybe answer check will tell me that that is correct. Uh, oh, I didn't choose four. Um, do I have everything else drawn? Okay, this four. It's going to see four above. There we go. All right. That was that was different. Um, yeah. Putting the zero and the kind of the three, two, one, and zero in here sort of all locking each other in place. Um, kind of reminded me of the, the the little game where you had the cars and you had to move them around to get the the red car out of the thing. That classic game that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, that was interesting. I've never done anything quite like that before, where you're concerned about how much freedom of movement the the pieces have. Hmm, that was different. Very cool. All right, so that was my final one. I'm sh quite certain I was well into bird territory, probably. Um, let's see, 1053. Uh, 1053. Oh, <laughs> no, just, I just made a crab. Uh, 11 minutes was the time. So, so yeah, so I, I got a crab on that one, too. So um, just very narrowly avoided the bird on that one. So, fun stuff. All right, so that was some more pencil puzzles. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I think I'm all caught up to Christmas now. <laughs> now that it's the middle of January. I'm all caught up to Christmas other than the supersized puzzles. I need to do this, a couple of supersized puzzles. Um, yeah, maybe... I don't know. I've thought about doing supersized puzzles. Um, a video of supersized puzzles for Patreon, but I kind of hate to... Um, I don't know. I don't know what to put on Patreon and what not to. I don't want to necessarily force people to go support me on Patreon to get stuff. But I also want to, um, you know, kind of reward the people that are supporting me on Patreon, even though they're not doing it for the reward necessarily. Um, I, I feel like I want to give them something. So I'm not sure. Let me know what you guys think. What would be good for Patreon um, and not Patreon? And yeah, so... Uh, I'm always open to suggestions. I can always ignore the suggestions, so <laughs> feel free to suggest things. And there you go. That was some pencil puzzles. Uh, we'll be back with some more pencil puzzles soon because uh, I'm, like I said, I'm up through Christmas now and it's uh, the middle of January, so at least we're not quite as far behind. Um, let me know how you guys did on those puzzles down below, how many uh, birds and crabs and sloths you got and whatnot. It's always fun to hear what other people did. So, and I'll see you again soon with some more puzzles. Thanks. Bye.